This might just be the best shallow water lure out there. Today we're going to be talking about using a hollow bodied frog and using it maybe in places that we don't always think about. I'll tell you what, when I first started frog fishing, one of the biggest misconceptions that I had, and I think that a lot of anglers have, is that this bait only mimics a frog. We see a frog and we think about, you know, where frogs live and that the bass are just keen in on the frog. Well, this type of lure needs to be considered more of an all around top water bait. And in other words, it can mimic all kinds of different uh, bait fish, it can mimic bluegills, just a, a wide range of forage species. And when you think about a frog like that, it just opens up such a wide range of opportunities for it. So when you think about using a hollow body frog to represent a wide range of prey species, it opens up just a huge range of places it can be used. As you can see down this shoreline, this is not typical frog fishing cover as far as the pads, the vegetation. And you know, we've got those here and I'm sure that we're gonna hit those, but I am trying to mimic something else that might be swimming in this area. Maybe some bluegills are up there in and around the rocks and I'm targeting shade with this frog on this you know hot summer day. So I can pitch it up underneath docks really, really well. I can throw it in places that I cannot throw any other lure. I don't have to worry about it getting stuck on limbs. I don't have to worry about firing it way into you know some overhanging brush. I, I'm not gonna have to spend all my time up there trying you know to get the lure unstuck from those places. In other words, my efficiency level goes way, way up when I'm using a hollow body frog. And also if you're just learning how to skip lures, this is an excellent choice. It skips really, really well. Now, if you're fishing the hollow bodied frog in the traditional sense that you're in your pads and your emergent vegetation, that is when you're going to want the heavy power rated rod or even the extra heavy power rated rod. And as far as the tip on those, you're going to want just a super extra fast tip. You're not worried about accuracy as much because your odds are you're just making long casts and they don't have to be super accurate. You want that, that heavy power rated rod to win that fish out of cover when you get a strike. Now if you're fishing something more like this where you have open cover, some open water or the cover is very sparse and isolated, then you have a couple options with the rod. You can go um, once again use a, a heavy power rated rod that has more of a moderate tip. You got that soft tip so you can be more accurate in your cast. Or this one here, I'm just using a medium heavy power rated rod and that works really well in this more sparse cover or this isolated type of cover. So as far as the rod, that's how I would suggest that somebody go. Now as far as the line goes, I'm straight braid, even in pretty clear water, I'm going to go with straight braid. Um, this is 50 pounder that I'm using right here, but you have a ton of options. You can go anywhere from that 30 pound braid all the way up to 65 plus. And even the smaller braid, those 30 to 40 pounds, they're going to rip through the vegetation just fine. So whatever your preference is as an angler, that's the braid that I would go with. But always, always I'm using a high speed reel when I am hollow body frog fishing because when I'm done with that lure up around in the cover that I'm targeting, I want to get it back to the boat as quick as possible and then go ahead and make another cast. Now there's a lot of talk about the hook sets when you're using a frog. And there's two ways that I look at the hook set. If you're in that heavy cover, okay, you got the pad fields and the thick vegetation, that is when you're going to want to do the traditional two count or the three count. Let the, the frog be inhaled by that bass. So they blow up on it, they take it, and then you're gonna have to one 1,000, two 1,000, or wait till you feel pressure, then go ahead and set the hook. The, the largemouth in those situations oftentimes have to reposition the bait. So when they get a big mouthful of weeds, 
they're going to just kind of reposition that bait so that's where it's nice to wait now if you're fishing more sparse cover in open water you don't have to wait on the hook set as long odds are if i caught one right here up on this rip wrap or up on this rock right now in this open water odds are they're going to get it pretty quickly so that type of situation you don't necessarily have to wait as long on the hook set now what about the color let's talk about the color okay so you can see right here this is really really dark and muddy water so that is why i decided to go with straight black it's a solid color it's something that the fish are going to be able to see from underneath that solid body so your your solid whites your blacks those are good lure choices in these types of water conditions now if you've got more natural colors i'm probably going to focus on those in, in stained water or clear water your bluegill patterns anything your browns those types of patterns i'm going to use in the clearer water especially if i'm trying to mimic and imitate different prey species other forage than just you know your straight frog if i've got a bunch of bluegills up and around grass and vegetation going with those natural bluegill colors on the frog are going to be really really effective now the presentation this is something where i think a lot of times as with many lures especially if i'm targeting sparse pieces of cover is we often can overwork the hollow body frog I like to think about it this way if I see natural prey in the water whether they're bluegill shad frogs whatever they might be they spend a lot of time just sitting okay almost motionless and I think there are moments as anglers where we come in and we fish a lure and we just impart way way too much action on it and the bass key in on the fact that you know that that's not natural that doesn't look natural now with that said there are times where we have to keep a steady walking cadence with the lure to draw the attention if we've got the really thick vegetation you know i've got this dirty water there's going to be times where i gotta impart a more steady action to get the fish to notice it but a plastic frog is one of those deals where you really have to let the bass tell you what they're wanting that day. If you're getting quite a few fish follow, or if they're just kind of swiping at it but not ta taking it, that's a really good indicator that you've got to do something different with your retrieve. And, and there are just days where they just don't want to inhale this thing. They just swipe at it three or four times before they finally take it. So keep varying your retrieve, alter your retrieve, mix up your cadence until you get those fish to commit. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about as far as sparse cover and isolated cover. We've just got this super small patch of vegetation up along this riprap bank. The current from the main river is coming down the channels over there and we got kind of an eddy situation going. So this is where this, this hollow bodied frog, I can get it right in here into this middle, middle of this grass and this vegetation. It's not going to get hung up, it's super efficient. And this is where, like I mentioned earlier, changing our mindset to how and where we fish this hollow body frog can be so, so critically important. Like I said, when I was first learning to frog fish, I always just kind of assumed that a frog imitated a frog. Speaking of different types of forage, we've got a video right here on what forage looks like from the bass's perspective, the point of view under the water, and how close do we actually match it. So go ahead and check that one out right here. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you may change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.